This is LS11. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're listening, however you're listening. Uh, welcome along to LS11 from Proper Sport, your one-stop shop for Leeds United chat on a Wednesday morning. Uh, thanks very much for watching, for downloading, liking, subscribing, all that gubbins. Uh, loads to come. I'm joined in the studio, as ever, with our resident rock star from the Pigeon Detectives. It is, of course, Ryan Wilson. Good morning, Ryan. Good morning. How are you doing? All right, yeah, good. Uh, it's good to, good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, a good weekend. Yeah, steady weekend up in Harrogate. Steady away. Yeah, in uh, Ben Parker's old stomping ground. I had to drive past the ground, Ben, just as they were all nice. piling in. Got a good win um, at the weekend at Harrogate. They did. They, they drew last night to Halifax. But um, now they've been on a good run lately. Yeah. Been good. doing well. Good. I quite fancy going to a game up there. I quite like them little stadiums like that, you know. Oh, really? You call it a stadium. I think so. Little grounds. Another ground. Yeah. Uh, a more formal welcome to our former footballer, Ben Parker. Let's just give a little ripple of round of applause. Yeah, well Because someone was at Reading last night. Mm, thank you. Thank Look you. at that. He's doing the hard yards. <laughs> Half past two in the morning, he gets home, and, yeah. then he's, and he's straight in the studio for seven. S- some so. say it's dedication, Ryan. You know, you know what I mean, Sharpie? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got, you got, got to go to these extra yards. You have, mate. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's noted, it's, mate. It's noted. It's for the cause. Yeah. It's for the cause. And uh, also joining us uh, in the studio uh, this morning, former Leeds United player, now football agent and that is Kev Sharps here. Good morning Kev. Good morning. How morning. are you doing? Yes, good, good, thank you. Um this lovely hour. It's <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, beautiful hour. I mean, Best time of the day. I've been, I've been up early doors anyway, my <laughs> three month old lad, so it's uh it's three months for me, yeah. Yeah. Wow we yeah, okay. I feel um feel old. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I know that feeling. Are, are you getting some some sleepless nights? I would imagine at the moment. Then yeah, a few, a few, yeah. Um, which it's part of the course, and you know that's yeah. how it is. But it's uh, it's great to do it all over again. You know. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying that through gritted yeah, teeth. I, I think. I'm just, just thinking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're streaming live on YouTube and on Facebook and uh, if you want to get involved and you've got a question for anybody uh, then uh, post them on uh, your, your relevant streaming app and of course we'll have the usual bits and pieces we'll be looking uh, back at the games we'll be looking ahead to the games we'll uh, have a look at uh, the Alioski files there's plenty going in the Alioski files this yeah. week I have to message you guys I'm a bit struggling this week then. oh it's then, a good week and then for the Alioski files 10 piled in oh it's from, a good week so um, yeah it'll be quite interesting to see definitely uh, we'll be doing that and of course any news Graham all on the way on LS11 this is LS11 well let's start with a game shall we Luton away uh, over the weekend you've done some miles uh, Ben yeah, Parker yeah I've, I've, cl- I've clocked them <laughs> up um, do you do the driving um, I did on Saturday there did and you? back really yeah um but to be fair to last, last night, Conor Morrison, he, he, he did a full stint. Oh, there, that's nice. There was not a chance I'd get him behind the wheel there. Really? <laughs> I, I went all big time, actually. <laughs> did you, uh, did you really? I, I drove on Saturday. I'm not driving on Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> were, you, were you sat in the back um, just on your own, on the back, and nobody I went in the, the front back, um, young, young Jack Bowers. He, he, he took the front lead with the um, co pilot oh, right. last night. So you didn't even get a shotgun? No, no, oh. that, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy yeah. to like, r- r- ride. <laughs> you brought your there. pillow. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, did, but you, no. did you get your head down on the way back? Nah, no. Um, took, took the phone, um, put a few playlists together. Um, <laughs> Are you the DJ? I'm ne- the I've never sung Greatest Showman at quarter two before on M1. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't a... recommend it either. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Um, football, yeah, uh, football. 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 Um, the, the, the st- the, it's definitely an old school stadium. I, sp- I suppose it, a lot of people saying, "Oh, yeah, proper football stadium, proper yeah. football stadium." But then Jerry McNamee, a uh, friend of the show, uh, 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 obviously does some stuff on Fans Right. He was there, mm. and I think he was in the hospitality area, which was in somebody's <laughs> back garden, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say it wasn't palatial. <laughs> Br- uh, Brinlaw described the uh, the stand. He said, "If you just took the hospitality section out of the east stand." That's basically their stand. <laughs> right. No wow. other seats. The scaffolding on top. No other seats. In just a row of, well, we want to call them executive boxes, but yeah. looks more like conservatories. Yeah, it's a strange. It's a strange old ground. And um, I thought he was going to allude to a story here about 
Phil Hay, Brinlaw. I wanted to talk about that because yeah. that commentary area was, let, let's say, compact and bijou. Mm. Um, and it was a little bit snug, wasn't it? I'm not going to lie, I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, enjoyed I'm just it. remembering the, the picture because the, the, uh, there was a photo from behind and I think Brin was on the, was Brin on the left and then you in the middle? Br- Brin was in the middle, he was the, he was the lucky oh, right. one. So he, was so, in between, um, he was a Parker Hay sandwich. Brim was in the middle of a Parker Hay sandwich. <laughs> wow. But it say, was that's stuff, that one. <laughs> that's <laughs> stuff dreams are made of. I know. People get paid good money for that. We could. Uh, we are taking Christmas bookings. <laughs> 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 Um, the game itself, um, I mean, I, I think over these last two games, really, and I saw a tweet this morning. Um, I think it was one of my students, Matty, actually, saying, uh, Matty Ingham works yeah. at LUTV. Um, and he was saying that, wow, um, those two games, last season probably would have been two points. And we were expected just two points in the two games. But we've got six out of them. Yeah. May, may, maybe Saturday, um, a bit of a, it was a, bit of a, a strange game because we, we dominated from start to finish. There were a little five, ten minute spell when they scored the equaliser where the crowd grew into it. But straight from the first whistle, they just put poof, ten men straight behind the ball in their own half, and um, you could see likes of Ben White, Berardi, Ailing, who were on the ball as a defender, and just like, well, this is an easy game. Like, yeah. no, no one's pressing mm-hmm. me. I'm not gonna have to do too much defending. But um, it, w- it was interesting what Bielsa said prior to that game in his press conference, where he alluded to what he's learning about the division, about not having to play too well. The performance isn't the be all and end all it's all about collecting the three points mm. and uh, over the space of the last four, four days I think that's what, what we have seen And um, but the performance on, on Saturday I thought it was very good mm. and um, to get a, a, a late winner there w- w- were great and um, it, it set up last night p- perfectly boys were full of confidence but um, no we, we, we played some good stuff at Luton their, their keeper were by far man of the match in my yeah. opinion made some, made some great saves and um, but no, it just, it just shows the character at the moment, doesn't it? Sharpie, like you got to yeah, be impressed with that. I mean, it's one of them games you'll probably look back at the end of the season and go, No, it was really important to get to get a win there because it's it's a tight ground, fans are really on you, yeah, you they know, are. So the atmosphere is quite intense. The pitch isn't always great, I mean, it probably was probably Saturday, you know, but um, and and in fairness, the manager's is well respected, he plays sort of like. You know, he's known a similar style to Bielsa, being an assistant manager under, under Roberto Martinez for for many years. A good friend of mine, Graham Jones. I played at, at Wigan with him for for many years, and he's become a good family friend. So he's uh, I, I know how he works, how his style is, and um, you know he's got great respect and earned that through you know the time he has been an assistant at, at Belgium and and the players he's worked with. But yeah, back back to that, it was a uh, it's, it's it's always going to be. A win's a win, but how Leeds did that, they'll look back and go, yeah, I'll tell you what, it's worked out to be a really good win, that one. Oh, um, definitely. I think it's like what you said, what Matty said, who, who works for LUTV. I think last season, I mean, look, we had a good season last season. I know it tailed off with that yeah. Easter, Easter weekend, really tripped us up, didn't it? But <laughs> but even you look at this season, we struggled at Charlton away, Millwall, which I mean, we never get old <laughs> from Millwall, but these long trips down to, to London, I know Luton's not necessarily in London, it's, it's outside of London, but... It's good as. But, yeah, it's as good as. Um, but these long trips, I say long trips, but these trips away to these tight little grounds like we mentioned, you know, we, we, we can find ourselves being playing the better football, but not necessarily getting anything out of the games, and we've seen that before, but there's, some, there's something that I think I've seen a big improvement this year, and it's just what you just said there, Ben, I think we're not necessarily... Bielsa has, I think he's learnt from the league from last season. I think he really has. You know, mm. a man like Bielsa, you'd probably think he knows probably everything there is to know about football. And when it comes to the championship, you know, he probably watched every single game from every single team for the last three seasons to figure it out, because we know he's that analytical. But I think being a manager and for a full season last season, I think he has learnt a bit. Like for so far this season, we've seen him make defensive changes, which we didn't really see that last season. So to to, to hold a game, he'd bring on. Um, a defensive player or, or rather than last season he seemed to think well let's go for the third or fourth goal or whatever so I think 
for me, I, I didn't actually watch the full game. I've only seen highlights of the Luton game, but it was a bit of the same old story. We, we had some clear cut chances, but again, I think their goalkeeper were the the one, the, the probably the best player on the pitch, pulled off some great saves. But we kept going till the end, and that's what I like about us. We saw it last night, you know. Um, uh, Jack Harrison got a goal in what 89th minute mm. or whatever it was. Mm. So um, we we've got that about us. We keep going, we keep going, we keep going. And dare I say, it's stuff what champions are made of. Ooh, you said, mm. it. said it, said it, said it, said it. But it's, it's, it's those yeah. sort of performances, isn't it? You, you sort of look back, those sort of like really tight 1-0 wins that you just like on a Tuesday night in Luton or Tuesday night um, uh, last night in Reading. Those are the ones that you'll look back on and think, actually, yeah. yeah. That, that's what you said, Over the course of the season. And um, we, we actually said in commentary, I remember the time, we're 82nd minute, looked on the clock. And we um, we said me and Bryn just um, if we get three points out of this, it's uh, it's a massive statement. Mm. We um, like to say it's what teams who get promoted usually do go out and get that three points when you've given away a goal. When to be fair, against us under play, we were, we were dominant. Um, but you've experienced that in your career, Sharp, aren't you? Where you just um, chalk off those wins, tick them off. Mm. Um, so you might not feel it at the time, but then you look back end of the season and you think. God, that was a big result, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I, you know what? I think Bielsa, he, he knows now he's going to dominate possession. He's going to dominate the ball in every game. That's a fact, and I think teams accept that. Yeah. The problem Leeds are always going to have is creating in the final third and putting the chances mm. away, and that seems to be the case as it was sort of like late last night against Luton. So that them games, that i.e. the last two games, are, are crucial in the mental process of the players. Staying concentrated, staying determined, fitness levels come into it. Shows the fitness where they're, you know, hammering down the door, mm. literally. Good to point, that shot. E yeah. Extra minutes, you know, after added time, back basically, and so they're important aspects that Bielsa will be looking, going. That's probably where we didn't have that last year. Whereas this season, he's ch he's tweaked a few things, sort of like on and off the pitch. I've noticed. Um, obviously, you know, looking after a few of the lads, they've. They've, you know, alluded to that as well, where it was almost suck it and see last year. Whereas right. this time he's learnt from, you know, what <coughs> he's done last year and, and probably put it into place this year, mm. which is ben you know, it's benefiting at the moment, you know, and hopefully, you know, that continues. But that all, that all coincides in, uh, you know, in getting results and, and really digging results out. And like you say, Ben, it, 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 Luton was a prime example of that. And, and last night, you know, it, it just seems to. Um, be one of them things where he's probably thought I'll tell you what that is that is benefiting us from maybe things we're doing off the pitch now um, which, is, which is which is normal because he was new to the country he's new to the, the environment he's new to the players and vice versa and, and things take a bit, little bit of time so he's had to adjust and you know things are starting to, to work for him now mm. you yeah. know hopefully that continues no 100% 100% and I think for me that the, the, that Luton game, I mean, in particular, like so as well, just basically just almost repeating what what we we're all just saying, really, like going away to to a team like that, which look, let's face it, they're, they're struggling, but they're, they're weirdly struggling in my opinion because when you see them play and stuff, they're not a bad team. That you they've know, got some good players there. Yeah, well, yeah, they've yeah. got some good players. I mean, they've got some lads who came out of League Two, like League One last season as well, because you know they are they've they've, they've been promoted. Almost consecutively, I think, wasn't it? Well, was it consecutively? I think it was. Anyway, a, it's, yeah. it's a, a yeah. quick rise, anyway, yeah. from League yeah. Two to the Championship. But you know, I know, you know, they lost the manager who went to Stoke, didn't they? Um, when he were doing well with them last season, but then your pal took over mm. and and th it carried on doing really well with them. To be fair, and I, I, I actually rate rate them, and I genuinely do. Um, but I've, I basically what I'm trying to say is, I've seen teams play. A lot worse, and they've got more points than Luton currently, you know. So yeah. um, it's quite a weird one, really. But for Leeds to go, because for me, sometimes players, I don't. This is no criti criticism of because I, I love him as a Leeds player, but people like Pablo Hernandez sometimes didn't really like. I, didn't, I say I don't like it, but don't always perform to the same level as he does. Maybe Ellen Road when he goes away to some of these dingy grounds and things like that you know <laughs> on a cold cold Saturday afternoon or a cold Tuesday <laughs> night or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but to grind out a win and I, th I think you spoke about it there uh, Kev fitness you know Bielsa is he, yeah he's, he's all about the fitness no, 
it's not it's not shying how he how he trains the players and works mm. hard and there's this all this Bielsa burnout nonsense that goes about. But you know, we saw the the fruits of that labour really. You know, the them players doing all them running, all them drills, all that training that they have to do and you know, you represent Calvin Phillips and I watched an interview on Sky last night before the head of the game last night. They had um, an interview with Calvin and he actually one of the things he, he was saying, Oh, you were playing this murder ball on a Wednesday and um, training is is you know, we are pushed in training but you know, when you're getting goals in the last minute, like last night, Jack Harrison run the full length of the pitch to put that ball in the back of the net. He started and finished that move. Now, some players would have probably started that move and then, you know, made an effort to get up the pitch, but not being on the goal line to head it in like he was. Yeah. So, for me, I think it's um, it, it's it tells a big story about Bielsa's working, the, the changes that he has made, the the things he's learned. Mm. And to go away and grind out results, two two back to back away games, the ass end of the country really. Let's face it, you know, the, a lot of travelling time for for the for the players. Last season, we would have at best got four points out of that, in my opinion, if not two points. But you yeah, know, um, so it's it's a, a brilliant a brilliant two away games, and obviously we've got Burra coming up at home. Which they we know they're struggling. We need, we've turned Alan Rods into a little bit of a fortress recently, you know, which is good, getting good results there. So I think it's really positive at the moment. No, don't, it's, uh, certainly it's murder ball, murder ball. Uh, on, on a Wednesday. On a Wednesday. <laughs> Isn't murder ball wheelchair <laughs> rugby? <laughs> well, he Maybe. Is he could be under Bielsa. Yeah. He, yeah. be, he does think outside the box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure that's what, mu- what uh, wheelchair rugby used to be called, was murder really? ball. Or wheel- yeah, no, it was wheelchair rugby, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you have these big ball bars on the on the wheelchair, they used to call it murder ball, because it's nice. so violent. <laughs> it's so so violent. Well, maybe that's but why. it's not. I, I can't. Well, well, why we have I wouldn't so put it past him. But yeah, yeah. So uh, I mean, going back years, you know, it, <laughs> we used to play. It's either north, east, south. So wherever you're from, it was like or young v old. Eleven by eleven, five a side at end take, session. Yeah, take your pads off, <laughs> your socks down, and then it was just just free for all. So it was like oh you my know, God. it was like a proper full on, you know, muddy pitch and. and, and I like get, that old yeah. school, is and, that, and that's what it was. I think what Kyle's <laughs> alluding to is probably similar to that, where right, it, it's eleven v eleven, mixed teams, probably a few under twenty threes thrown in in the first team squad and. Um, and just go for it, and uh, there's no ref, so it's like being oh also a ref, God. and it'll probably blow up if and when he needs to, and he's probably in the trees somewhere anyway. But <laughs> uh, apparently, there's people stood around the edge of the pitch all with balls, and literally as soon as the ball goes out, play it we'll Boom. Go straight back on. So the so tempo is ridiculous. Yeah, it's you know, non-stop. non-stop. It's fire. Yeah. You know, it's uh, that sounds like fun. I'd like to watch that game. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I'd last about thirty seconds <laughs> with, with my fitness. I, I wouldn't even be able to walk onto the pitch. I don't think. Have you seen it, Ben? Have you been breath. up at Thorpe Arch and seen them? I've yeah, um, yeah I've um, been lucky enough to, to see it a couple. Of, we don't really go up on a Wednesday. Don't that's that, that's what the players focusing towards towards a Saturday. Yeah. Um, but no, the uh, if, if you listen to the players, like you mentioned, like Carl Blair speaking about it, um, Adam Forshaw speaks about it as well saying sometimes it's harder on a Wednesday than it comes a Saturday, but when you come to a game day, they're prepared. Yeah. And, and, that, and, that, and that's the be all and end all of it. So it does have, it does have a purpose. Murder <laughs> Ball's a great name. <laughs> Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But, um, but no, like you say there, should be the age of like an old kind of fashioned, like yeah, 11 v 11, go go out and um, give, give it your all. Because you have to remember as well, the, um, the, the say the opposition 11, they want they want to impress as well because they want to get in the manager's yeah. mind. Yeah. So every, so yeah. Yeah. every time you get a chance to impress th- this manager anyway, Bielsa, grasp it with both hands because he's watching literally everything. Mm. So mm. It's, wow. it's, a, it's just a chance to impress basically. Mm. You can see that as well. Yeah, people yeah. turn yeah. the game up against Leeds big time. Like you know, I saw it last night. You know, certain players like like playing out of the skin. You're thinking, where have you come from? You know, <laughs> yeah, um, sure, but, yeah, but maybe, yeah. maybe you're right, Ben. Maybe they got one eye thinking, you know what, Leeds are doing all right. That Bielsa quite fancies me. Who knows? Yeah, might get January move. Might get dragged out of Reading and come up to the bright lights of Leeds. <laughs> I think a lot. I think <laughs> the murder ball probably on a Wednesday is a release as well for the players. Yeah, because a lot of the the training is, is sort of like unopposed. So so basically, it's all mannequin player versus mannequin, and it's you're in a certain position, you know, and and your, your fellow, you know, uh, teammates in a certain position, so they all know where to be on a, you know, in possession. So it's 
Murder Ball's like could probably release to go, well, we, we never do 11 v 11. We never do. F- <laughs> we're going to smash someone yeah. in. Come on then. <laughs> no, I fancy a bit of that. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I'm sure the players enjoy that. You know, I'll tell you what, I bet the legs are a bit tired after a Tuesday night game playing that. I bet they'll be. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm sure they, um, they do it. On, <laughs> Without right. a Madrid game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Could you imagine? Long trip back from. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, there'll be a few pulling out today if uh-huh. they have to do it today. Oh, gaffer. Right. <laughs> bit tight today <laughs> <laughs> would you dare say that to be else well probably yeah. to be fair they're probably that fit they could probably go and do it today yeah. Um, mm. yeah. but um, no it's certainly interesting mm. how would you how would you body hold up to this regime Sharpie back in the day I don't think it'd work mate <laughs> <laughs> hey Gaffer I don't think this is working out be- f- for yeah, me I and you yeah, is it <laughs> I think we need a chat Gaffer you know we either we move on or <laughs> we part <of> company <laughs> you know, I, had the pr- I had a problem where I was you know too quick <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to get off the pitch. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you say to the bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. And, uh, uh, no, this the the, uh, the tempo actually. I pull my hamstring watching it. I'll be honest. It's, it's <laughs> ridiculous how they, the tempo they play. It's another, just another level. How, yeah. how, how do you compare it? Because you obviously go watch a lot of games over other clients mm. up and down the country. How do you compare watching Leeds to other teams? To, it's, it seems like the tempo. The t- uh, the, yeah, I think the tempo in general in the in the game certainly lower down has quickened up. The quality is probably not as there as much. Mm. Um, but in terms of leads, uh, the tempo's there and just the re- the retention of the ball. Mm. You know, there's no. Other, I haven't seen any other team really um, like it. Certainly in the championship, I've seen probably every team in the championship. Um, and there's far to say it's probably most of the Premier League as well. Mm. You know how they how they. M- you know, no one can really. Everyone says, "Oh, how does he do it?" You know, how does Bielsa do it? You know, <coughs> only he knows that. Yeah. You know, we don't mm. know how he how he gets so much. How he gets White coming out of the ball as he does, like he's got mm. acres of space. Calvin on the ball as much as he does. Uh, Hernandez picking up wherever he feels and when he wants to, and dictating plays. It's, it, it's a special way of training and sort of like educating the players' minds to mm. to where they need to be at certain situations and how yeah. he does that because you know yourself, Ben, that. In a game, anything can happen. Any scenario <coughs> comes up. Mm. Who knows how it's going to pan out? Mm. But he seems to know how it does. I think that's what makes him remarkable. It's I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it, it, he's got an unbelievable knack. And that's why worldwide he's so renowned and so respected. Yeah. Because of that, I yeah. think. Because of them sort of issues and and how he, how he puts it across to the players. How he gets that across to the players. And how... Because, uh, you know, you speak to the players and they don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be mm. honest. They do drills, yeah. which probably, not knowingly, it happens, and these situations arise in games, and they do it. Yeah. But they don't really probably understand that it, how it comes about, and how they, it's just player movement. The fitness is massive, as we've said before. To be able able to get, and I can probably speak, certainly from Calvin's um, perspective, how he's come on in terms of his game under Bielsa, because. Mm. Um, him personally, his fitness was always an issue. And right. as a centre midfielder, you have to be able to get about. You yeah. have to be mobile. Now, in Calvin's situation, before he came, his body fat was probably a little bit high. Um, his mobility in the midfield areas probably wasn't as good as what it should be. And he's highlighted that because he had everything else. For me, yeah. he had everything. The mm. tools were all there. His technical ability, his range of passing... Every, you know his hunger, his desire, everything was there. You know he's a tough, tough character, but that mobility to go to the next level, you have to be able to get back the pitch. Mm. Now he tweaked his diet, he tweaked his um, just obviously his training schedule, um, and obviously you've seen what he is. He's gone to another level. He's a machine now. Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. You know, when you say tweak and everything, yeah. when yeah. you say tweak the diet, does that just mean like no chicken nuggets? <laughs> no, yeah, well, probably a little bit. Of that. Sharpie no cake. Them. No okay. I just yeah, get him to send them to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, just yeah, it, it, it's a bit of that, um, and it, it's body body fat's a big thing, you know, because if you, you, I think when you have a certain percent, I think it has to be ten percent or under. If you get um, above that, then you've got a problem. Certainly mm-hmm. with Bielsa, now it has to be way below there. Right. And Calvin had to had to tweak that at some point, and um, and and then how hard is it as a player though to adapt? 
because I think people are the same thing. Well, all you have to do is go on a diet. Everyone goes to slimming diet. Slimming well. You just go slimming well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go get your points. Go yeah, yeah, yeah. Play for Leeds. Keep fit with your mum. I mean, let's be fair. Bielsa's not going to be calling me anytime soon. No, no, no. Bow adds it to get down your body fat, get down to a target weight, but also train at that intensity. It must be so difficult. Yeah, uh, and I think it's, which I found really strange, because carbohydrates, we used to load up on them when we played. Smash them in. Yeah, batter and pasta, <laughs> everything. You know, so, but it, it obviously puts, uh, it puts weight on you. Mm. Now, they allegedly can't have carbohydrates uh, all week, up to 24 hours before a game. Now, for me, wow. to train at that intensity, carbohydrates burns fat, it burns, so <coughs> it allows you to just just apparently energy, go longer yeah. to yeah, yeah. supply energy for you, but um, he doesn't allow him to have that. So what the fuel enough, I haven't got a clue, you know, within the body, because you're thinking, well, wow. you can't have carb. So that strips the weight down straight. It's a lot of protein. Yeah. Um, but then they load up, say, Friday onwards, you know, mm. before the f- side of the game or, say, you know, Monday before Tuesday game. Mm. Um, and they're still trained at high intensity, which yeah. is absolutely remarkable for me, you know, yeah. but it clearly works. <coughs> I was going to say, it's working, you know, isn't it? it, uh, it so for me, it's, um, you know, stay with it. Why change the formula yeah. if it's working, you know? I might try it for a night out. I might go longer. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, it's not bad idea, club. is yeah. it? It's not bad yeah, idea. Tonight. <laughs> How many calves in a kebab? Yeah. Yeah. Probably oh. quite a bit. Um, <laughs> just, just wrapping up the, the, yeah. the, the games, um, uh, and obviously, like, Re- Reading... Uh, last mm. night, uh, they yeah. will feature, of course, in the Alioski files as well for one certain thing that they do every game, which yeah. always makes me giggle. Uh, <laughs> but that, that we'll, we'll come to that in a little bit. But um, atmosphere last night was that the, 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 the stadium looked a little bit empty to me. Yeah, I found, I found it odd. Um, a few Reading fans in fancy dress. Dressed what? as empty seats. <laughs> <laughs> but thought it, thought it was a strange one. Not the time. Four minutes to eight. <laughs> Ben's on five. Ben Ben's on five. Boom, boom. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than this. I apologise. <laughs> but um, now the, the atmosphere went great. Obviously, from um, from where we are to our right, over two thousand Leeds fans. I mean, Leeds fans were in fine form. Last night again. Tuesday Choo- night, making that that trip down. Yeah. It's just um, yeah. remar- remarkable. Yeah. Um, we're great. And um, longer the game went on, you could hear him getting louder and louder, almost trying to drag that goal out of us. But um, I thought it was it was a, a, a game of a strange kind of game, to be honest, mm. from, from our point of view. I thought for two thirds of the pitch, um, we kind of dictated the game, didn't really get anything away. But um, final third, we just struggled to really create anything meaningful. I just thought um, how they settled red in, they had a, a five along the 18 yard box. And we're just trying to play balls through, little uh, threaded balls, little yeah. one twos, little give and goes around the box, and they w- they want the space there to to do it last night. But um, and then we fa- we found a way, um, we, f- we found a way to to get a winning goal. And um, so you have to say what a move by the what a counter attack. Oh, it's yeah. fabulous, isn't it? Because yeah. it's come from their free kick and the yards Jack Harrison puts in on there because yeah. he's sort of yeah. like he's involved right in mm. uh, the defending well, that's a really good little cutback to Dallas I think it was actually you know yeah, he's I've seen old. some some players in that in them positions they'll just do it up the pitch because it came from yeah, yeah. Yeah. it came from an attacking free kick from them mm. didn't it which um, Cassie did quite well so it wasn't you know, it, it, it was a wet night it bounced yeah. just before him and he, he kind of parried it out didn't he and you know, I've seen some players just oop the ball at the pitch just to clear the lines, essentially. But some, some are to the loot and one, you know, yeah. Yeah. from that counter-attack. Yeah. It, you know, yeah. again, back to the fitness levels. It, yeah. You know, they, they're they right at it the very, very last minute, yeah. you know, and it, it, it very similar. And it was almost like, no, we're going to get this winner. Mm. Definitely, you know, mm. it's and that belief. And like you say, Harrison, <sighs> we made up some ground there, yeah. you know, in, yeah. in them dying moments. But um, unbelievable. Like you say, the travelling fans, Ben. It's ridiculous, isn't it? You yeah. know, the desire and, and just to go and watch Leeds all over the country at that, you know, yeah. and that, it, it's brilliant. Absolutely, you don't get that at many clubs, do you? Let's no. be honest, do you? No. Just, not, you not, just, all. Pff, not at all, and it's uh, it's just brilliant to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A few incidents in the game. Um, we saw Tyler Roberts go off injured. Um, apparently, a hamstring pull. 
I've, I've, I've since read that he didn't want to come off. I think in Bielsa's conference afterwards, <coughs> Bielsa said we took him off as a precautionary thing. Um, apparently, he didn't want to come off, but we didn't want to risk him. Um, which I guess is a sensible thing to do, Ben, with you know, with a lot mm. of games coming thick and fast in the Christmas period. You don't want to have him out for a while, do we? No, but then I think you look at the two lads who came on in particular in mm. uh, Helder Costa and um, Alioski. I thought them Changed too. The game, I thought it? they just injected a bit of, a bit of pace, mm. especially with Costa. He, um, he came off bench for the last 20 minutes against Luton and um, it looked really threatening down mm. that right-hand side. And um, same again last night when he, ca- when he came on for for Roberts. He, um, it's almost like, because um, Hernandez has come in and um, put started ahead of Costa, it's almost like, right, I've got a point to prove. Yeah. Because mm. I, cause I thought he was, he was playing well up until the, um, up until the international break. Last time, out, last time out against Blackburn, I personally thought it was best performance in a lead shirt. Yeah, yeah. Probably both on the ball and off the ball. So um, sometimes as a plays like, right, I'm, I'm going to prove you wrong now. I, f- I, I should be playing. I feel like I'm, I've been doing well. And um, it, that, that, that's what it's about. It's a squad game end of the day now. You, you need a squad. So yeah, um, yeah we'll have to wait on Tyler Roberts. But um, if it's a precaution, um, look, if Bielsa makes that call, who are we to disagree? Yeah, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly right we're going to get into the fans views uh, of the games uh, as well now but before we do uh, let's hear from one of our sponsors of course the social maze uh, who deal with social media management Uh, we all work in organizations that advertise uh, with the aim of winning new business and the social maze help a load of businesses uh, sort out their social media strategy Uh, now if you uh, if your place of work isn't active on social media then uh, do find out why because at the end of the day it's Massively important. Uh, it's one of the most powerful marketing tools at your employer's disposal. Uh, and many of us uh, spend a significant amount of time browsing content on our mobile devices, as we say, on the toilet. Uh, the social maze uh, work with loads of different types of businesses, and they'd love to help those who may not have the time, resource, or knowledge to effectively use social media to its full potential. Uh, because it does take a bit of time, uh, as, as we know. Uh, from running the uh, the social media, and you did a lion's share of the social media for LS11, yeah. so it does take a bit of time. It does take a bit of time. Social media should, should hire me. I'm pretty good at it. Or <laughs> social media should, ju- should do ours. Yeah, yeah, should do ours. The, the sponsors. Just, just saying. <laughs> that would be an saying. idea. Yeah. Um, take a look at their website, socialmaze.co.uk, or email info at the socialmaze.co.uk to find out more information. <laughs> Right, it's time for fans for you then, and uh, as ever on the social channels, uh, we find out your views of uh, the game. This is obviously after the uh, Luton game at yep. uh, the weekend, Ryan. What did you get? Yeah, not enough time to do fans views for the Reading game because I do have to get to bed and get up early for we this. Do. So, we um, do. But yeah, so thank you for contributing. Um, as always, a lot of responses. So this is, again, um, after the Luton game. Sam Wall says, bit of a crazy game, to be honest. <coughs> Created more than enough chances to win it. Their keeper made some brilliant saves, but our quality came through in the end. Some winnable fixtures coming up now. Let's keep it up, mm. MOT. Debbie says, never gave up. The team spirit and our pure class shone through. At the end, great win after the international break and hopefully a few more players back from injury, injury soon. Um, so we can only make, so that can only make us stronger. The Louise Barnes says, "Good to win, but by God, them bloody commentators were annoying." More from them soon. More from them soon. <laughs> <laughs> and not you. It's ben. not a social It's not, 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 not like a Ben. ben no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll tell you about them commentators right. soon. Oh again. my God. And Aidan Buckle says, hat forward away, hat, had thought, fought away win. Um, Luton made it tough. Bamford looked extra sharp after getting the goal yeah. against Blackburn. Um, well taken first and in the right place for the second. Big three points. A nice little gap is appearing at the top. Although it's not his goal, apparently. Yeah, the second one's yesterday. officially yeah. not given as yeah, his goal. Yeah, it's an own goal. Yeah. If you ask yeah. Patrick Bamford, he has a different point of view of no, that. I bet he so. would do. Well, he's a striker on, on, a, on a goal it? bonus, I would yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a hefty one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course he's going to say it was Christmas his goal. is round the corner. <laughs> I'm going to say, I bet he would a bit skint up until recently, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. There we go. Just on basic wage. Basic wage. Would have been tough. Would have been tough. Loads of comments coming in as well. Lizzie saying good morning. Philip saying good morning from a nice 20 degree Tel Aviv. 
Tel Aviv. Uh, so we've got well, a, Tel- a Tel Aviv listener. Mm. Um, he also says, can't Leeds find a translator who speaks English well? I find it very tiring to get through one of Bielsa's pressers for 45 or more minutes and trying to work out what's been said. I don't envy the journalists at all. Uh, but yeah, um, it's... Well, it's, I speak to... well. Obviously, we, we cover the press conferences yeah. and um, we speak to a few of the journalists and it is quite hard for them with the, <laughs> not only the translation, but um, the uh, what nationality is the guy who translates at the moment? Is he Spanish as well? Do you know? Um, who's done the last one? I know Carlos Corbran. It's not Carlos Corbran. It's <coughs> the other fellow, one of the other coaches, I think. It will be from yeah, yeah, Spanish. It's, it's, yeah, it's Spanish speaking. So you've got you know Spanish speaking guy translating it into English. But I thought last year... Um, with uh, Lam- Lamrani, he were French, Warry. So French speaking guy translating Spanish into English. <laughs> that that's uh, that's some talent that in it. Oh, yeah. That yeah, is yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> but um, yeah. Lee Gold up. Uh, we've learnt to win ugly after last season. And on uh, YouTube, a few comments coming in. Morning, fellas. Uh, this is from the Dan Dob. 1982. Uh, great three points. Who do you see as our biggest challengers to the top two this season? Fulham. Fulham? Uh, well, Fulham got a good win last night. Fulham. They batted Derby, didn't they? If you look, yeah. at, you look mm. at the team on paper, yeah, have, you, have you seen much of them, Sharpie? Yeah, they're decent, mate. I, I, yeah. I, I like, even though we beat them, I like West Brom. I yes. think mm. West Brom yeah. are a real powerhouse. Yeah, yeah. I think Pereira is a real talent. Who He probably gave Calv his, his toughest game this year, even though I thought Calv you know, stuck to his guns and did well, but he's a, he's a talent. Uh, mm. But the, I think all... All around, I think, like you say, Ben, I think Fulham are going to be a real challenge. West Brom. Um, but after that, you know, I can't see anyone challenging what, Leeds. I mean, what I what about Preston? Do you think they've got enough to no, I think keep, fall keep away. it going? I think, I think Alex Neal's done a great job. Fantastic, mm. you know, for the resources he's got mm. and the, the players he's got um, with respect. But no, I think, I think Leeds are... Um, there's no one who, who can touch them apart from them too. I'd probably I'd agree with I that. I think I, I'd agree with that. Um, like I I tipped Fulham beginning of the season just just obviously by just looking what you said. Ben, look at their team on paper. You it's know, a great it, team. Fit Mitrovic. I, I think Mitrovic had a bit of an, an injury issue recently, but he was back last night and back with back scoring again instantly. You know, mm. he's a quality player certainly at this level. I mean, he tore it up. For, he got Fulham promoted pretty much single-handedly yeah, yeah. a couple of seasons back. I think yes. they got him in January. And then he just scored a bucket load of goals, yeah. and you know, every time they yeah, <laughs> they've got promoted. Mate. So, yeah, yeah. no, but they've got they've, they've got a great team on paper of Fulham, um, and like you say, West Brom. I think West Brom powerhouse is qu- quite a good way to describe mm. them. They are quite they're quite big, strong, powerful, mm. technical, and they're, they're they're a good team, very good team. Yeah. I think it's us three are going to be battling for that top two position. Yeah, I agree. Oh, it's going to be interesting. Okay, uh, the Alioski files on the way very shortly, but right now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for any news, Graham. Boom, <laughs> boom indeed. Yes, uh, it's your Wednesday wake up call with your latest Leeds United news in any news, Graham, uh, of course. All about Graham Smith, uh, who is now the uh, Yorkshire Evening Post chief football writer. Now, Phil Hay has uh, uh, flown the nest to the Athletic yep. and yep. to podcast as well. Yep. New podcast coming by him soon. Intriguing, intriguing. Mm. Uh, This week's uh, Any News Ground brought to you by The Terrace. The Terrace providing unique football merchandise, uh, connecting fans to their football uh, moments, uh, inspiring by retro kit culture, iconic legends. You can get your hands on anything, phone cases, beach towels, and the ever-famous kit mugs which we have in the studio this morning, as ever, the LS11 ones. Uh, The Terrace, more than just an order number. (laughs) Uh, all right, so in news, I've, I've actually already uh, spoiled some of the news for well, you. Well, yeah, you've, uh, we've, Sorry. we've just briefly mentioned it. Um, the second goal at Luton officially confirmed as an own goal. Um, so Patrick's only got one goal for that game, which still one Devastated. Goal. But I'll tell you what, you've got yeah. giving credit where credit's due. I think it's one of the fans... It wouldn't have been there. an own goal if unless if Patrick Bamford exactly. was doing what he was doing there. So Right place, right time. Yeah. Yeah. Made yeah. a run sat near post and you know made it awkward for the defender. What did Patrick say then? His, his goal did he yeah he, he, said, he did. said it's my I, I touched it first did he yeah 
what strikers were you played would have been claiming it everyone every single one <laughs> <laughs> I would have claimed I was left back yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and honestly I touched it <laughs> uh, I'll have an own goal yeah. <laughs> if I was their player yeah. <laughs> I'm having it yeah. <laughs> I think I, in fairness up to that like you say I thought his run was brilliant to be fair great run didn't you know, he, he sort of like you know shuffled to the left to make the darting run to the near mm. post so on that basis, he deserves it <laughs> for me. You know what I mean? I, and like you say, as a forward, you've got to take that. The thing you? is, the defend, the defend. You guys are defenders. You don't want own goals on your. No, on your, oh no, you'd be giving it. No. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> yeah, bad. Yeah, like, oh, I didn't touch <laughs> me. Didn't touch <laughs> me. No, Mike Pearson, well, no, <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> Bamford. Yeah. It'll go in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, just actually, just really quickly on Bamford in runs. Um, the goal last night. He did brilliantly taking Gunter out of the left back position, the uh, right back position, sorry, mm. to essentially allow Jack Harris to come in. If mm. you look at the replay, Bamford makes this run towards the front post, and obviously the ball goes over. He's dragged the right back to the front post and mm. Mm. opened the space up for, for Harrison. So, I mean, the thing is, even when Bamford wasn't scoring, week in, week out, we were saying on here, he's doing the right things, certainly off the ball and working really yeah, hard. Yeah, exactly. So, credit where credit's due. Again, last night, he didn't, he didn't get on the score sheet, but his movement essentially opened up that space for Harrison to get a goal. So, yeah. well, well done, Paddy. Um, okay, so... Um, and great shithousery from Patrick oh, Bamford, yeah, he I loves think. It with away, he loves Fantastic. it with the uh, away games. The way to fans, endear yourself to Leeds United fans. Yeah. Shithousery after him a shit, goal, yeah. definitely. Were he getting some shit down at Luton, Ben, did you hear? Because he, he were giving Luton the old cup tier and stuff. I like that. I like that. Yeah, yeah I like yeah, that. Just give, give him yeah. it back a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Did you see it yesterday as well? Did, did, did you see it yesterday after you, the goal, Have you seen it yet? Yeah, I've seen the um, when his little celebration towards, but nothing too nah, it's just a bit out of the ordinary. Really. No, no, no. no. Or, or what we're going from the fans towards him. He wasn't like, oh, God, he's getting a bit of stick here. But you know, sometimes you, you hear stuff, don't you, as players, and you mm. think, ah, oh, perfect time to give him a bit back, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> um, so... In Marcel's um, the the pre Reading uh, press conference, he, he he mentioned something. I just wanted to to bring it up and see what you guys think about this. Um, he said Leeds are Leeds are trying to, d- to develop their attacking play and efficiency, so they don't need so many chances to score. So basically, cool. he's almost admitting that the the essentially not taking the chances. I mean, Kev, yeah, what you know, obviously as a bit of an outsider, you're covering all the games and stuff. What what do you make of Leeds? With the amount of chances to the goal scoring ratio, do you think it's a worry for us, or do you think, you know, as long as we're still creating the, the vast amounts of chances, mm. there's nothing to worry about? What's, what's your thoughts? Yeah, on that? I, d- I mean, I always believe if you if you keep knocking, batting down the door, it'll happen. It, you mm. know, it'll it'll come, and it's one of them that I think, Lee, you know, with the amount of possession, it can only it can only come. You know, mm. I think um, the players have got. I think which is important, <coughs> certainly in January that the forward attacking options have to be have to be fit stay mm. fit um, because that's a crucial time you know we, we discussed it off air earlier that you know in this country we cram more games and more um, uh, fixtures in as we can in over the Christmas period mm. and it, it's a, probably the most important time yeah. um, with fatigue setting in and the demands so that's really important to to help the Elsa players and certainly how how um, intense they are um, and, and how quick they play <coughs> certainly attacking mm. that final third's really important to to lead to how they progress um, because that ultimately that'll depend on on h- and if they win games or not yeah. you know creating chances is, is great but you have to put them away and Bamford certainly uh, you know these recent weeks has been great but up until then he struggled you know he's, he's flapped at a few things he struggled to you know find the mm. target um, so we're just hoping he he um, he carries that form on, and and um, and he also needs another, you know, a couple of players to chip in as well. Mm. You know, they need to yeah. contribute as well, which takes the burden off him a little bit. Um, Aye, Hernandez, you know, it's good to have him back and mm. and him firing on all cylinders and uh, and other options. You know, so yeah, it, it, it's vitally important, like you say, that that they convert these chances. Mm. Um, uh, you know, certainly as, uh, as we approach a, an important period. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And like I say, you know, he's not. Well, he doesn't mask things, does he? BLC, he's, he's quite an honest guy, and and mm. that was just something we picked up from the press conference this yeah, week, which I thought it'd be quite good to to mm. know your guys' mm. former players' thoughts on that, um, which is good. Um, the under twenty threes, back to back wins, the two 0 win mm. over one of your former clubs, uh, Kev right, Wigan. Yeah. 
Um, Alpha McCalmot, what a pass that you see that pass to beautiful Sisper pass for Great Stephen's pass. goal. Parker esque, yeah, no, no, Parker -esque. <laughs> 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 more like my defending. <laughs> no, that's what I meant. Yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 yeah. out of position. <laughs> <laughs> no, I meant uh, the defender of the left back. Sorry, mate. I didn't mean the fan. Sorry, pal. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm just getting. Have you not seen his cross for I'm Becchio the, in against? Yeah, Norway. I'm the battle of the <laughs> bad left backs here, me and him. <laughs> It'll get me back soon. <laughs> but now, um, a good performance from from the under 23s the other yeah. night. Um, Alpha McCalmont. I had to give him man of the match when I got asked towards the end of the commentary on that um, if I did well. But um, after the um, got the beaten by a derby, they responded to wins on the bounce. So. Yeah. Um, good bounce back ability. Bounce back mm. ability. Oh, partridgeisms already <laughs> this morning. <laughs> Brilliant. Yep. <laughs> um, so some news ahead of the Leeds Academy. It's oh understood yeah. that um, Andy Foster will be named as the club's new head of academy coaching after Richard Cresswell's departure in the summer. Um, okay. He's well thought of in the coaching circles. He joins from Middlesbrough and has uh, has a FA background as a national coach developer. So um, good luck. I mean, I, I've 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 met Rich Cresswell a couple of times. Really nice guy. Yeah. And he, his lad, his lads in uh, Charlie. In Charlie. Yeah. Who's he played the he played the other night. A few rave reviews about him actually. A lot of potential apparently. And, um, I found it personally. I mean, I, I spoke to Rich or, or or anybody. I just I found it strange that I left. But obviously, you know, probably for good reasons or whatever. But. Anyway, it looks like they've got um, a decent, suitable replacement for him. And um, as we know, Leeds United are bringing some mm. great young players through at the moment. And so, you know, we, we're scouting around, we're bringing players in from all over the country, not just local lads as well, but um, it's working well. So uh, if we've got a good guy at the helm um, to, to help them in that front, that's good news and good luck to, to Rich when whatever he's doing now. Yeah, nice good luck guy. to him. Nice yeah. guy. Um, and then... Oh, we've got off. some transfer yeah, speculation. Just, just a few transfer Love news that, that pops up. Um, yeah. Whether it's true or not, it's probably a load of rubbish, but I um, just thought we'd share them anyway. Alf, uh, uh, Alfredo Morelos, which is, uh, who was a Rangers player. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Apparently he's linked with the move away from Rangers and Leeds United being one of the well, I'd have to give Derek runners. a call, my old mate Derek, who's Derek, a Glasgow he, Rangers. He, Remember Derek from yeah, Derek. Uh, Radio Yorkshire? He, he does a lot of yeah. reporting up there. Don't yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll have to find out. He'd know. Uh, if He's it was quite a good player at, uh, at, yeah. that, at that level, anyway. Um, yeah, I've seen a bit of him. He's decent. Yeah. He's yeah. a bit fiery. You know? Yeah. He's, he's got he's a had, bit of. He's had a few red cards yeah. this time. Yeah, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's, yeah, he's yeah. got a. Uh, yeah. He's had about six red cards or something in, in yeah. one season, last yeah. season, or something ridiculous <laughs> like that. So <laughs> he always ends up top scoring the SPL, though. Yeah, yeah. So he can, he can score. To be right? fair, yeah. though, I could probably be top mm, scoring. Yeah, yeah. I can't comment. I've got a player up there who's doing really well. <laughs> so I hope you're not listening, Sam. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think that SPL is better than the Premier League. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> alright Sam I've got you a new 10 year uh, deal up in don't, Scotland don't ask me any more questions on the SPL <laughs> 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 and you, you've got more more transfer news yeah, look uh, at you in go the, in the Italian media this week uh, Leeds are reportedly interested in uh, Cagliari's midfielder um, Nathitan Nandes oh, well um, done. by the way in the report it sounds like a potential summer move though depending on the, um, Leeds United's promotion push essentially so yeah um, I think um, they did continue to go on that. Quite a various number of Premier League teams are also looking at him, but Leeds are um, very keen on him, apparently. Yeah. Uh, this is all speculation, of course. I mean, I saw Twitter explode yesterday because... Um, uh, and Ketia put a... Uh, oh, uh, well, that, well, that, that exploded, that one of didn't them, it? Yeah, put an iron back thing. Yeah, or, or yeah. Or something like that, whatever it was. Um, the bollock is now on Twisted, yeah. apparently. <laughs> That's good news. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> they keep it back in training soon. <laughs> Free and dangling, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> tough not to cry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Oh, oh dear. unbelievable. No, um, <laughs> what's called director of football my Victor, Victor, Victor. Oh, oh he was photographed he having a meeting then. wasn't he yes yeah, apparently in London in a meeting yeah. so somebody took a photograph of him in a restaurant or whatever could have been who's talking to with? anyone with? I know it's like it could, could have been be a his, mate could be his pal uh, it could uh, be exactly, yeah. you know yeah. somebody yeah, it just 
I think culture. I love all that stuff. He's, he's so allowed <laughs> to eat out. He is, he's yeah, allowed yeah. to do he's that. He's allowed to socialise with people <laughs> other than Rad Rizani or Bielsa or whatever. So, <laughs> um, so that's a uh, that that were a bit of a, yeah. a crazy one. And and another potential January move. Um, again, Leeds United are apparently interested in Liverpool forward Ryan uh, Ryan Brewster. Right, I, say Ryan I think it's Ryan Spelling, actually. Yeah, uh, Ryan. What, how's it pronounced? I think it's Ryan. I think it's just the worst spelling of it. Oh, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Well, mine's spelt properly. R Y A N. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan Brewster. Mine's spelt properly. Spell your name right. It's all I'm asking, Ben. It's all I'm asking. Yeah, yeah. That's asking for much on you, mate. <laughs> no. Why are you putting H's and I's in Ryan? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if Bryn were here, I'd be asking him. We had, we had Bryn in last week. Who I thought it was Brian. <laughs> Brian. Don't even I get spell me started. Different. Don't even get me started with that. Every time I'm on the phone, <laughs> so here's, here's from the PG Detectives. <laughs> it's Brian Wilson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that does make yeah, I get called Brian all the time. <laughs> Uh, do you know what? I'm just going to call him Brewster. <laughs> Brewster from Liverpool. The brew. <laughs> oh, brewery. Brew. Oh, the brew dog. Oh, brew dog. Brew dog, yeah. Um, very oh, good, very good little player, actually, you know him. Very mm. good. He's only young, though. I think he's only 17, 18. I think I saw him play. Tearing it up in, in um, like, he the played. England under 18s. Yeah, and I, think there's like. a, I think there's a few after him, isn't there? Yeah. Apparently. yeah. I'm pretty and sure he played in that Bradford City uh, one the pre-season pre game. Pre-season for yeah. Bradford. He probably did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he was playing. He's a very, very good player. But mm. on the transfers, guys, what do you two think? <coughs> Bielsa's, obviously, I don't think there's going to be knee-jerk reactions to transfers. I think he likes to promote within, so you get the get the youth players moving through the, the, the system. I, for the first time in a long time, don't necessarily think we need to sign players in January. What's your thoughts on that, Kev? Um, bear in mind, uh, you earn your money from yeah, transfers. No, so. I mean, no, no. yeah, yeah they didn't sign all mine. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, um, I, you know, I look back to to last year. You, know, you try and pick. You try and look at where sort of like Leeds, you know, failed last year, if you mm. will. Um, was January? You ask a lot of questions. Did, did, was January a problem? Did they strengthen at, at the right time? Mm. Yeah. Did they bring anyone in? I can't actually remember if they... Well, they tried, well, didn't they? got, they? They got Dan Kiko. Kiko, Kiko, Kiko were a big one. It was the main one. We yeah. needed Dan James and Dan James nearly through. happened. That was nearly, yeah. yeah. So, 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 that, that so you sort of think if that had happened, then... I then, know, then maybe. Shoulda, woulda, coulda. Yeah, exactly that. So that I'm with you, mm. Ryan. I, th I think Bielsa, he doesn't like to unsettle anything mm. too much. And if he can, he would like promote from within and that'll be younger players or or try and mess with the system a little bit and, and, and maybe if he needed a centre half he might throw Calvin back there mm -hmm. and force or when he's fit go in there or try you know Ben White as a holding midfield he'd come up with something that would mm -hmm. probably yeah. make people think oh no, we didn't need that you know but um, you know I'm, I'm one of them I, I, I still believe they need an attacking option mm -hmm. some something with a little bit of pace What's your thoughts on Enketia then? Like, like we're fit, I like we're fit him. I like, I do you like think him. he's the attacking option that you speak of, or um, do you think something extra as well? I just don't think he he ideally fits into Bielsa's style. Mm. I think Bamford is. He likes a number nine. Yeah, yeah. A typical number nine who's mm. big, mobile, can look after it. Um, just how Bamford is really, but a little bit. You know, probably more goal threat. Mm. Um, whereas Eddie can score. <coughs> mm. If you if you add that to sort of Bamford's game, you've got the perfect player then. Yeah. yeah. But I just don't think he, how he plays and his build up to play, Eddie fits that. I, I totally agree. We, we've seen that. You know, Bamford, if he was putting the ball in the back end of the net, like I say, if he, if you could mould him with Eddie, yeah. it'd be perfect. But Eddie, maybe alongside somebody in a different formation, mm. playing off the big man, that's his. That but will he change that, that formation? But he, I, d I don't think he will. I just don't think he will. Even when they were both fit, it were one or the other, wasn't it? And you he know? had the chance, didn't he? Yeah, yeah he did have the chance. Because yeah. Eddie was yeah. really scoring and, and doing yeah. well, coming off the bench, and mm. for England as well, doing well. Yeah. And he had the perfect opportunity. And Bamford was was form wasn't ideal, mm. and you think they'd be the per perfect partnership, but he, d he just doesn't like to play too. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he mm. loves his out and out wide man, doesn't he? Yeah. You know, and if you lose that and play two, it's I almost like the control yeah. in the middle of the park. Yeah, I think that's what he, he yeah. likes. Or control of the game. 
Yeah. Predominantly, it's always difficult when you've got two out and out strikers, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. The ball can come, ball come back a, l- a little bit more. It can be a little bit more spread out. But um, I think I, I agree with you, Sharp. I think like I'd be I'd be very very surprised if we have got anybody in January. Mm. I think it'd come up with, like say a, a different option. Mm. Um, we mentioned people coming through. Robbie Gotts. Mm. Yeah. What a great what a great yeah. young player. Mm. You know a lot about him, Sharp. Mm. Um, there's players like that who um, shackled sh- him back on the bench last the night. Yeah, the, 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 the chomping at the bit, like Robbie, like yeah. he's been on the bench loads. Just want some game time. <coughs> um, his attitude second to none. Mm. There's, we've got players like that who, um, for for me, I'd rather put into the team than you're signing somebody. It can take a while to get used to mm. the system under yeah, Bielsa. Yeah. So um, rather have somebody who who knows it inside out. Put put them in regardless of the yeah. age. Yeah, I totally agree. I was just about to say the same thing, Ben. I think if you've brought somebody in, it could take weeks, if not months, to yeah. to get mm. to round to the Bielsa style and and get to maybe the fitness levels that he wants mm. as well. Mm. Um, because let's face it, a lot of people that are going to move in January sometimes fringe Premier League fringe players who have not been playing a lot of games or wh- or whatever. So yeah, I I just don't. I think for, for the first time in a long time, don't really. F- feel unless we have some injuries over Christmas touchwood we don't but for me we you know we've done all right with injuries this year not we've had a few niggles but nothing too bad I think Forshaw's probably been the longest currently he's seemed to just be an innocuous hip thing but it's been been out quite a while now mm. Shackleton out for a few weeks to be fair um but you know Bamford Coops all these they were just dipping in and out of it, the the injury room really but back in within a few weeks but last season we seemed to really have Bit, bit of an issue with with injuries, and you could arguably say maybe in January maybe did need to yeah. strengthen to to bolster the squad, let alone um, you know anything else. But um, for me, I think this year, this this sorry next year, January, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if nothing happens, you know, mm. and and I, and I wouldn't be angry as well. So, okay. There you go. I'm saying it here first. I might be changing my opinion come the first of February when we're when we're in we're third and we've got ten players in injury uh, and yeah. stuff. But um, but no, um, in Bielsa we trust, I guess. In Bielsa we trust. Uh, yeah. Just to ra- ra- round up the news as well. Just something I noticed as well that uh, this morning uh, today is eight years to the day uh, that uh, Gary Speed died. Is it? It's eight right. years to the day yeah. uh, that we lost. It. I just rem- I remember that morning because I was on air. Uh, and then I managed to get hold of uh, Howard Wilkinson that morning when I was on uh, on you? the breakfast show, yeah, and chatted to him um, about Gary Speed, and mm. it was just yeah, like so a, 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 yeah. a word on it. Yeah, so you, um, yeah, he was. Um, I mean, he's a, just a great man first and foremost. Yeah, a top top professional, um, and just just a well liked person in the change room. Just a good guy. I remember myself. It, it was a Sunday morning, I think, wasn't it? Um, yeah. Um, we had, I was actually playing the vets game. Rolled myself out to play in the a vets game and heard it. Um, I think I'd heard it. Oh, I'd got a text through from Gary Kelly, a good friend of mine, and we were like, "Wow!" For someone from the outset, you just think he's got everything. Yeah, you know, good-looking guy, lovely family, manager of Wales. You know, is is actually home mm-hmm. nation team and uh, had a fantastic career. He, he, it's it was just weird <laughs> just yeah just strange yeah. how it you know it came about and we don't know the reasons behind it uh, I, th- I don't think we still know but um it was just a real really sad loss for for everyone associated with gary and, and everyone who knew him mm. just a, a fantastic mm. person yeah no, definitely it certainly was he was the first footballer i ever met as a kid i know and, yeah and a lovely guy i've told his story quite a lot but my first of Leeds game i went to I went round to the west stand afterwards to meet the players and just mm. as, as a kid, he were, him and David Batty actually were just two of my heroes growing up and they were just really endearing to me and a little chat and stuff. And from that day on, I used to go to school after telling all my mates I spoke to Gary Speed and David Batty. And, mm. you know, just little two minutes, gest- nice gesture towards mm. a little fan changed my, well, made me probably love Leeds like I do today. So forever in, in debt to players like Gary Speed mm. and how mm. nice he was and stuff. And yeah. rest in peace, Speedo. Mm. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, that wraps up uh, any news, Graham, here on LS11. Oh. 
Boom, indeed. Yes, uh, we've got the Alioski files on the way. But, of course, our guest this morning in the studio is Kev Sharp, footballer-turned-agent. Um, uh, when did you sort of decide to go into sort of like becoming a football agent? How did that all sort of come about? Um, well, I'd finished, I'd retired um, about 30, 33, 34 from the professional game. And I was at a bit of a loose end, to be fair. And it was, it was a friend of mine, um, Martin Bradley, um, who was working for uh, another company, uh, First Eleven Sports at the time, who represented Ben, the man himself, Ben Parker, and a lot of <laughs> other players. It was a <coughs> well-established Leeds company. Um, and they asked me to come on board with my, the contacts I had that I generated through the game. Um, so I came on as a consultant and, and joined the company. Right. Um, so as that progressed, um, I, I sort of like got more of a foothold within the company and um, generated my own players, myself and Martin, through... Um, that were linked to that company um, and now 10 years on we've um, formed our own business called Palm Sports Management right. myself and, and Martin where we've got our own players within that company now so it's our own business um, and it was just like I say through I mean in, in any in any industry any business it's about your contacts and certainly mm. football yeah. is no different it, it's massive um, and, and you live and die by them contacts really and and your players as well so um it, it was basically came about like that and and you know such what it, it's going really well at the moment yeah do, do you find um, do, do you go out and lo looking for players or uh do, do, do players now come to you how, how does it sort of work um i mean a lot of the players certainly now are, are from recommendations your current players right so if you if you look after them and, and do right by them they they'll recommend you to a teammate or mm -hmm. they're looking for an agent or um, but generally we've had the majority of our, our players now from the age of 17 now the majority of them are playing first team football at whatever clubs so, you know, we've got one at Aberdeen one at, you know, we've got Robbie Gotts and Calvin at Leeds and Tom Pearce went to Wigan and so we've had them from, from young age you yeah. know, from, mm. um, so we've got Lewis O'Brien at Huddersfield who we had at a young age so it's just yeah. keeping them I've been from Bradford City last season yeah, actually exactly. excellent I did, player I did really well and yeah. he was broken to the first team and I went to see him last night actually did did well again so he's a real prospect yeah um so there's a lot of a lot of players that are the good people you know that's important to us you know how we run our businesses is, is is how we are you know we we're, we're just honest genuine people who are loyal you know and that's how we've been brought up so you sort of you sort of expect that back from the players as well because it's a it's a tough industry out there. There's a lot of yeah. you know, there's a lot of good agents out there who I who I get on with and work with and it's like any industry though. There's exactly. a lot of bad agents as well. Yeah, I would and, imagine. The, and there's a lot of bad ones. Yeah, yeah. and um, I you know it, if a player didn't want to come stay with me or, or be with me, I'd certainly recommend a good one. So I'm mm. not adverse to things like that, you know. But I'd rather you know I had a I had a couple of indifferent agents when I when I played. And it was just when agents were coming out, to be fair. Mm. And um, you know that's one of the reasons as well why I've probably got into this industry as well to try and you know change that perception of of agents really, you know, and, and help them because it's more of a an on and off the pitch job and agency. Now it's not mm. just about turning up, rocking up, and doing a deal mm. and negotiating contracts. Yeah, that's tough in itself because you deal with a lot of difficult clubs, but you've got the the mentality in dealing with the players off the pitch, making sure their mindsets bang on for when they go on the pitch. How, how, how big's that got dealing with like the players off the pitch it's over the years? Yeah, it's tough. It, it's tough because every player is different. Yeah, uh, every player is different. You forget that, and you treat them differently. Every player's got their own individual problems. Some might not have problems. Some might not want to speak to you every day. Yeah. Some might. Um, love that attention that individual attention might want to go for a coffee or a bite to eat every yeah. you know, once twice a week just to reassure him really of how the game's going because because I've played the game and Martin's been involved in the game we, we can offer that advice the time the day has gone where the, they turn to the parents have got a little bit older you can't always talk to the manager and we offer that service of look you know this is my opinion why don't you try this why don't you look at this as a, an alternative option whatever it may be so it's really, um, it's not just an agent does a little bit more than that now. And certainly our company does. Mm. We, we offer that personal service. 
Do your do your players need uh, social media management? I'm just thinking <laughs> there is a there is a company that we know. Yes, yeah, I've heard, might yeah. be able to help them out. I've I would heard. imagine that's a little bit of a minefield though, because obviously when you guys were playing, social media wasn't around. Um, but now I'm it's not that old, Darren. I, I guess they're <laughs> not that old. <laughs> old but Friends Reunited was on when you I, were. I used when to play you were Snake going. on Nokia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've still got a Nokia. Yeah. He was on Yahoo Chats. <laughs> that's when he was. Uh, MSN, you MSN Messenger Boy. MSN, that was yeah, 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 MSN Messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd imagine that you, that's that's a minefield anyway. That you've got to sort of it's another thing that you've got to sort of take care of with these players. Yeah, they've got to be really careful. I mean, ev- a lot of clubs now manage that. Yeah, you know, you've got to. I've noticed. Um, you know, it leads after a loss. There's nothing on the players put nothing on social media, okay. um, which which I've noticed. Whereas a win, mm. they're happy to put the pictures out there and congratulate the teammates and congratulate yeah. all the. So which is which is fine, you know, and that's it. And taking that away from some players, social media, they love to do all that now. Mm. Don't the young lads love yeah. to control? Yeah. So now that'd be difficult to control for me. That you know and. I wouldn't like to go that far and control that that's controlling half the life. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So um, yeah. that would be that would be a difficult one. I think it's more of the the mindset, like Ben said, that the mentality side of it now. Yeah. Um, that because of the high profile, uh, how the game's gone, that's that's tough to deal with. You know, and it's gone through the roof now with, with players. Mm. And certainly, if you get to the top end, you, you're, Ooh, yeah. you're film star esque, aren't you? Yeah. You know, it's. It, it's going that way. Yeah. I bet that's a, a huge job in itself for, for an agent to, to, to manage that, let alone, like, say, the contracts and dealing with the clubs. But, like I say, dealing with the players. Like, it's quite funny, so we've had Simon Grayson on the show, and he, he, he when he was the manager at Leeds, he banned Twitter. And do you know why he banned Twitter at Leeds United? Because Ken hey. Bates bollocked him because... Dave Sommer got injured. Sommer got injured. And he, tweet, he tweeted tweeted out about his oh, I've knee, done my knee in, did his ACL well, yeah. I can rem- remember it was, right. yeah. was away in pre-season mm-hmm. up in right. um, in Glasgow yeah. and um, called a meeting and said right Twitter only just started to come out then yeah and yeah we didn't have a clue what it was to be fair well at least yeah. didn't have a clue what it was <laughs> yeah, yeah. they didn't have any Twitter presence it was Juicy and it was <laughs> Tom Kerwin yeah. Yeah. that was the that Leeds was United the Leeds Twitter, Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. 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 so yeah remember to this day said right that a ban, a ban on all social media. I just don't so. think you can do that nowadays. Social media is that big. You what, can't, what, yeah. what would you do if you? What would you do if like Bielsa just went to all Leeds squad? That's it. Don't put it on there. Do you think they'd be uproar? Do you think they'd just have to respect it? Do you think they'd be slightly be doing it? That. That's it's what I mean. A, it's, it's a difficult one. It's yeah. such a it's such it's a big control, entity yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we spoke about social media before and the impact it has. I mean. You know, I get it in the music industry as well. It's 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 a big thing. It's a big promotional tool for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, exactly. And fans talk to us and everything as well. But unlo- uh, probably a hell of a lot worse with football though, because I must admit, if we release a new new piece of music, you might have thousands of people going, "Oh, it's classic new song." Then you have one person who goes, "Oh, that shit, like your band shit, blah blah blah." Then you <coughs> you you chew on that one negative comment. But with a footballer... I did delete that. Yeah, I, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate right. that one. Right. <laughs> oh, God. You just want free tickets, don't uh, you, for next, next summer? He's retra- <laughs> <is> retracted that. <laughs> um, but obviously in football, you know, one week you can you could beat a team and that's that one particular fan can be like, yo, you're best thing since sliced bread. Then the following week you have a, a poor game and you lose. That exact same fan can be saying, you're shit. You yeah. should be wearing that shirt. So there's a lot of negativity can be bred into them and... and that, that, that's where that's where you have your network system, i.e., uh, good agents. Yeah, because that's where you need them. Because sometimes, like I say, you don't feel comfortable going like speak to other people or whatever. You just yeah. might want to speak to someone who knows the game and who's got your best interests. And you just like, so what do you think about overnight? And the good ones, like like Sharpie, like does like oh. yeah, I think you are shit, <laughs> but. <laughs> This is yeah. what you can do better, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. and rem- remember where yeah. you are. Yeah. Like hon- honesty is good, honesty is good, but then yeah. have a solution as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, spot. I'm always intrigued as well with football agents. What it's what it's like in those negotiations. What it's like in dealing with clubs, like dealing with Leeds United and you're sorting out Calvin Phillips' new deal. How difficult? I mean, it's from the outside. It looks like a really long, drawn out process, and it's sort of almost like a, a Mexican standoff at mm. some point. I mean, what? What is it like dealing with that? Um, I th- I th- I'd probably say the higher end sort of deals, are, apart from the finer details within the contract, are quite straightforward. Right. Because when the club really wants your player, um, and, and we're in a process with Calvin, he really wanted to stay. Yeah. So it becomes quite 
That's quite easy, easy, yeah. easy yeah. deal to do. And it probably was from the outset, to be fair. Um, even though it was, it was genuine, you know, interesting Calvin, you know, from, from the Premier League. Yeah. So, um, but it was always a case where I needed to explore every and go as far, far as I could with Calvin at Leeds um, before I did anything else. You know, and that was that was the case. So that was his right, hundred percent first option. Whatever happens, I want to get up with Leeds United. Yeah, I want to go to the Premier League with Leeds United. Simple as that. So that when when you climb, ultimately I have to respect the the player mm-hmm. and and his wishes. I would never go against that. If they decide that's what they want to do, then fine. I'll do my best and get the best deal for you at Leeds United. And that's how it was. Within that time of negotiating with Leeds. Then offers came in. Now I can't control them offers. You no. Know, if they approach the club and say, "Yeah, I want this much. I'm going to pay this much for, or offer this much for your player," then that's between club to club. Mm. Yeah. I can't control that. But within that time, um, I just got the best deal possible for Calvin, and it got to a stage where he was happy to sign it and happy to to commit his future to Leeds. Were there any Brilliant. serious offers on the table that? Maybe even you thought, oh, this might turn Calvin's head, you know, with a, a good team or anything like that. Were they, um, or were Calvin just dead set on, like, I want to be in Leeds, I want to stay at Leeds, I want to get Leeds promoted? Well, initially, early on in it, uh, Bielsa was a, a, a real deciding factor, him staying. Hmm. So I think potentially that could have turned his head if Bielsa hmm. had left. Because he, kno- he knows how important he is to, he, he, he doesn't show it, f- you know, physically and around him but he knows how important he is to his game and he has been yeah. to his game to make him go to that next level mm. now he's not he's like no other he's like no other player who's ambitious he wants to go to the premier league mm. yeah yeah who doesn't fair enough <laughs> and he wants to play yeah. for england so that's like any player if you don't there's something wrong should yeah. be playing already. Right. Yeah. You, you want him at your club basically exactly. would you yeah. exactly so yeah. for me he's he's exactly that so he he just wanted and he wanted that opportunity, certainly under Bielsa again, to go right. I, I want this opportunity. I want, I want to get there at Leeds. His mm. family are, are Leeds through and through. He wants his friends are, um, and he wants to do it with Leeds United. And, and ultimately, that was once Bielsa committed, I knew that was um, down to me then to get the best deal possible. Mm. And and he's such a good character, such a good person. He he, he almost doesn't question. You, 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 the deal you've got him yeah mm. he, he knows you've got him the best deal mm. and he's not money driven whatsoever at all he, he you know he, he's still amongst his family you know in Wortley that's where he's from mm. you know he hasn't you know gone to a big house in Harrogate or no he doesn't come across like a big time Charlie mm. at all he's does a he he's down to earth kid and yeah and you saw that in the Amazon documentary yeah, I thought yeah, yeah his, fam- his, his family, family and his and family and everything his family came, really came across so well to, really important to yeah him. Um, that'll never change. So that all them, them decisions, them factors, all come down to him. Um, always in his his, his thought process in mm. signing or, mm. or, or his decision making. Well, I'd like to say thank you. Yes, for, well done for putting the deal together and keeping Calvin Phillips at Leeds United. We are vastly running out of time, yeah. but uh, let's move on, ladies and gentlemen. We could talk. I honestly could talk about football agency for, for ages. I just think it's, it's so. Uh, interesting. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have to go into the Alioski files. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Alioski, Jenny Alioski. Yes, it's all for our fine Macedonian friend, the Alioski Files. Uh, just something that's weird, wonderful, and has caught your eye in the uh, world of football uh, across this last week. Alioski, of course, is uh, already in the Alioski Files, just for being Janny Alioski, Janny Cam. And wasn't he doing <laughs> the pump it up thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not, is that actually a thing? I'm not I'm sure how I feel about it. It's a bit of a. I'll tell you what, thing, the, the, pl- the players seem to like it. Do they? They've, they've, they've caught on to it. Yeah. It seems to be a little um, tune in the dressing room now. I'm <laughs> thinking the pigeon detectives <laughs> need <laughs> to do a version. <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> Maybe not. <But> but <laughs> no, he, um, <laughs> <laughs> how would it go, Ryan? <laughs> I'm not, not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you have, uh, have to pay me to, 
for my services. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Can't uh, be giving it out for free, Ben. That's you know I mean? true, mate. Yeah. That's, that's true. Living, that's true. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, def- definitely this came up in our little WhatsApp group, yeah. um, which was the Luton commentators yeah. uh, from uh, I, I follow, it? I follow whatever it is. Yeah. yeah um, and um, th- there's bias commentary, and then there's the Luton commentary, <laughs> um, uh, which we'll play for you right now. This is the lead up to Bamford's goal, yeah. uh, which is, I think, what most people are talking about. It, th- listen to this. Shinny cuts in field, flicks it off for Brown. Brown turns, he's tripped. Referee, he's tripped. Oh, come on. Izzy Brown there is tripped as the ball went past him. Referee just watches on and leads it now on the attack. Inside the area is Bamford. Bamford with a shot and scores. Patrick Bamford has scored at the other end. He races clear, but that is a foul on Izzy Brown. No two ways about it. And Leeds have catalyzed. They've gone down the other end. And at the near it's the no two. Uh, 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 come on, ref, <laughs> come on. <laughs> In fact, I've, I've, I've clipped that out now. So that, that is available to us at any point, basically. Yeah. We want it. It's there. So, yeah. Oh, come on. There we go. It's there yeah. any time we want it. Oh, come on! <laughs> um, I know there's bias commentary, LUTV, etc. Um, but, you know, that's club commentary. Uh, but this this was uh, insane, I thought. Yeah. Really. There, were, there were another period in the game where two balls came onto the pitch and Kiko just grabbed one and just booted it off, cleared yeah. the stand. Yeah. And th- those two, I don't know, what are they? Do I? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they just went... Come on, surely it's a yellow card. That's ungentlemanly <laughs> yeah. conduct. Or ungentlemanly like that. conduct, that was it. What the hell is going on here? Kiko had to boot the ball out of the stadium, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He had to clean the stadium. Sp- 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 spare ball and pitch, probably get, get rid. Probably <laughs> smash somebody's greenhouse or something with that ball. <laughs> oh. It funny, the challenge was nothing, was it, as well? You're like, come on. <laughs> that guy just shrugged him off, didn't he? Yeah. It, it basically did. Just, he just beast. shrugged him off, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, so definitely putting them into the, the Alioski files. Yeah. Um, uh, who are you nominating? Um, but, well, Spurs, I guess, for the Pochettino sacking and hiring Mourinho within it's a... It's not turned out that bad so far for them. Well, no, they've actually got, <laughs> got the, the, the into last 16 of the for, Champions League. Come out back from 2-0 last down last yeah. night. Yeah. But, um, no, I just thought it would just, again, now as far as anything strange, Mad. wonderful, happy, sad, whatever you see in football. But I thought that were such a bizarre situation, you know. Pochettino regarded as one of the top managers in Europe. Let's face favorites, it, yeah. you know. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I know Spurs weren't doing well, so that, that's basically yeah. the one that's like at the top of the league while. and they fired him. But um, yeah, so that's a, a funny one. I was also put in then as well. Then last night, the ball boy from uh, oh. last night's game in the Tottenham game. Oh, they yeah. run yeah. multi ball, don't they? they almost uh, got Champions assist, League games. <laughs> well, he did. And Mourinho <laughs> went up and gave him yeah, a high five, five afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Invited him into the dressing room yeah. afterwards. They couldn't find him. Yeah, he'd gone home. He'd gone home. Yeah. He'd gone home. So I don't know what they'll do about that. But yeah, yeah that second Harry Kane goal, I yeah. think, was pretty much down to that ball yeah, boy. Ball yeah. boy, <laughs> being yeah. on it, being on it. That was amazing. Um, ben, Ben nominated this. Uh, Gareth Bale. Oh yeah, Gareth Bale. Ron Ben, tell us about. Yeah, Gareth the um, the flag he produced after they got um, the qualification. Yeah. What what reads? What yeah. is it? Wales golf. Madrid, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in that order. I think it's in, in that order. In that order. Well, yeah. in that, order. <laughs> that went down well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who is it? The other player is it? Joe Allen. Uh, yeah. Uh, for Wales. Yeah. Uh, and they had another one for him, didn't they? Which was Wales sheep Stoke. <laughs> <laughs> because he breeds sheep. Oh, does he? I think it's always uh, Wales chickens Mike. Stoke. Work, he breeds chickens. Right. Yeah. You've gone to sheep because it's Wales. Straight to no, sheep. No, it, it was Wales. <laughs> yeah, I went straight to sheep. <laughs> sheep. Uh, no, it was Wales chicken Stoke uh, because uh, him and his wife breed chickens. Right. And he's just out of life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> What's that all about? <laughs> God. Uh, <laughs> Who else? Oh, uh, oh, this week. Gary, Gary Monk. Gary Monk. Do you see the Gary Monk press conference ahead of the um, game against Birmingham? Let's just say What's Pep Clotet. Something's gone do, on. Do you know what there? I think? I don't know what. Pep Clotet's grassed him up for all these dodgy dealings he had yeah. with him yeah. and his agent. Probably sounds, yeah. I think he's grassed him up or something. Uh, yeah, it's I think not on the Christmas card more. list anyway. Definitely. I mean, I mean, it was cringy watching that. <laughs> it thinking, was really oh, nasty. I don't, just, just don't say anything. Yeah, you know. Basically, that's what my character assassination on Pep Quartet, big time. If you haven't got anything nice to say, don't, don't say, say anything yeah. at all. It was quite composed how he said it. You know, he won't like being oh, a yeah. child, but but it were really cutting. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it was nasty. And like you know, saying things like, "Yeah, people warn me about his character. I should have listened, but that's my problem, my mistake. I'm in a mistake." Working with him, you know, comments like that essentially. And I mean, it were 
it were bad. Insane, it were bad. It? Like really you know, bad. you think at the professional level, you'd, you'd keep mm. things like that to yourself, yeah. wouldn't you? You know. And he's normally quite reserved, isn't he? Yeah. Monk, really? yeah. and he's, he's not normally like <laughs> so that. So he's really he? upset. Well, him. if somebody if somebody rumbles your little side earnings, then yeah. you'll get a bit cheesed off. Well, what's, him, uh, what's his space tonight? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> First, uh, the last one we're putting in is the Reading team sheet, Reading um, team sheet which yep. had on there the thirteenth man, the Reading fans. Down on, on the, the, team. On the, team. the team bloody team, team, team sheet. Yeah. And there was hardly anyone there. Named on yeah. the bench. Oh. <laughs> they were like. on the bench, number 13. Reading fans. <laughs> it was bad. It's cringy. That Hashtag. Cringy. Yeah. 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 Came as a seat. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Pop. <laughs> 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 Something in my throat there. So who wins? We'll let Kev uh, decide. There's a there's a plethora to decide from. So who do we dump in the Alioski Who goes in the Alioski pass in this week? Alioski, Spurs, Luton commentators, Gareth Bale or Gary Monk. Scott. Reading again. It's got to be the loot and commentators. Oh, yeah, yeah so I think so, yeah. yes. They yes. were good, good choice. They were clowns. <laughs> Nothing to do with the Calvin tackle, though. No, yeah. no, 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 not at all. <laughs> <laughs> More Alioski <laughs> files next week. This uh, is LS11. Right, a quick uh, wrap-up of the podcast for us and uh, look ahead to uh, Middlesbrough, of course, at home this Saturday, 30th of November. My God, it's December next week. Oh, Jesus. My gosh. Um, uh, so, uh, Jonathan Woodgate in charge of the borough coming back. back uh, he'll, get a, he'll get a good welcome, won't he? I think, I think he will. I, I think, think so, Leeds yeah. fans you know, obviously have a lot of time for Johnny Woodgate. Yeah. He didn't leave in under bad circumstances or anything like that. Mm. Uh, very good servant to us, came came through the youth system with like you know Al Smith, Kewell and all them lots. So yeah. um very good, very, very good player. Um Ben White esque to, to a certain extent. Mm. Um so he's back in town. Look, they're underachieving Middlesbrough for the they're squad they've got the third twenty first. Bo- third from mm. bottom. It's um uh twenty second I think they slipped into Oh really from last night's yeah, games. After last night, yeah. So um yeah so it's yeah twenty second they slipped into to third from bottom which is quite clearly not good enough for a team like Middlesbrough. Um, but look, teams Raise teams can turn game. up against against Leeds when when mm. you know when they play Leeds, and um, we know they've got the players to potentially hurt us. But one thing they they're not doing, they're not scoring a lot of goals. Um, that so with our defensive record and their lack of goal scoring ability, you'd like to think it'd be a something to nil for Leeds, in mm. my opinion. Ben, have you mm. done your research on them yet? Yeah, looked at um, um, what Leeds connections, like I say, Jonathan Woodgate, Robbie Keane, Johnny Howson, yeah. Adam Clayton. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of Leeds connections and always find like you, know, you want to get one over on your old kind of club, oh, don't yeah. you? Always raises your game a little, 5-10%. So well, Liam Cooper hit nail on the head a few weeks ago, says every team raises the game against Leeds. Mm. That extra little bit. And um, Saturday would be no different, so it would be a difficult game. But it's one you expect us to win, so... Um, oh, full confidence, aren't we now? Yeah. Score yeah. predictions then, Ben. 3-0. 3-0. Three nil. Three nil. Wow. Whoa, OK. Kev? 2-0. Two 2-0. Nil. Two nil. Ryan? I'm going to go 2-0 also. You're going to go 2-0. Mm. I'll go for my usual 18-0. Yeah. Right. One day it'll happen. <laughs> One day, it will. One day it, it, it will happen. It's due to happen. It's due. <laughs> and if we actually took We're a chance, it wouldn't be far off. Well, exactly <laughs> right. Exactly <laughs> right. Uh, that's it for another LS11 podcast. Just a shout out as well to anybody that's uh, uh, getting involved with our Fans React recordings after home games. The boys will be around the Billy Bremner statue, or if it's pissing down, they'll be under the Lowfields Tunnel. Uh, and the Fat Can't. Uh, Fat, fat can't. can't Fat <laughs> Chance podcast. <laughs> you sounded like a summoner trying Good to Lord. say it yeah. I did, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Fat Chance podcast live show in Leeds is at the Iger Studios on the 1st of December the tickets are 12 quid all the proceeds going to the Forget Me Not Children's Hospice get your tickets now and they'll be playing uh, Bielsa Rhapsody and live. all the other all the other big hits that oh released. Bucket Man yeah. oh it's all going to go yeah. off uh, so that's next week uh, at the Iger Studios Get uh, have a look at their uh, Twitters for that one Kev thank you so much for coming oh, in thank, thank you all very much yeah. thank really you. We'll make appreciate it a little it. bit earlier next time is yeah right? yeah early yeah. 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 for me five, yeah. five o'clock so much <laughs> better what, what, <laughs> what, what time's the baby feed we'll try, uh, we'll no. try and tighten with that two o'clock in the morning we could Skype you in from the 3am feed yeah yeah 
<laughs> uh, thanks very much for downloading. Make sure you like, subscribe, leave a five star review. Uh, ben, well done for the yeah, sterling well done, effort. Well done, Thank you, guys. Absolutely yeah, well done, a sterling man. effort. Back for, to bed. Uh, yeah, back to <laughs> bed now. Have a little, have a little rest. Uh, Ryan, of course, thank you very much. Yeah, as yeah, ever. Uh, but thanks very much for getting involved, all your comments, and uh, we'll catch you again next week. You'll listen.